first story I wanted to talk about, my you know, a kind of brief one to touch upon concerning my club, Man United, and concerning our um, you know main point of attack in Cristiano Ronaldo. I'm kind of enjoying this new kind of Man United direction that Eric Ten Hag has kind of taken us into, which I think someone mentioned the other day was um, more in the line of accountability. He's basically putting the ownership and the onus back on the players as opposed to the team and the club and the board and what now a manager. It's all about the players. Do they want it enough? Are they hungry to win titles? Do they want to put their best foot forward? Do they want to entertain the fans? Do they want to create extraordinary moments, bring the best of themselves on the pitch? Blah, 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 blah. And so far, there's been a lot of drama around Cristiano Ronaldo, right? Because he came back to the club under the premise that he was going to, you know, get us back to winning ways and get us a challenge for the title and being amongst the Champions League. And it didn't really work out because fundamentally our team was broken before he even arrived, right? Many, many years ago. The expectation levels have kind of dropped. Um, the, st the, the, quality, the standards of quality have obviously dropped. Um, and it's just basically a bit of a shell of a club of what he kind of left. But then he came in hoping to kind of, you know, pull us kicking and streaming, pull us kicking and screaming or streaming, screaming over the line. And it didn't quite work out. And we ended up finishing outside the top four. And by all intents and purposes, I immediately thought as soon as we finished outside the top four, even though Ronaldo signed a two year contract with the option of a further one year, so basically a three year contract, I was always under the assumption that if we didn't finish in the Champions League, at least in the first season that he stayed at the club, that he was at the club, sorry, I was under the impression who was going to leave. Because Cristiano Ronaldo never struck to me as a player who was kind of like, not, not Ibrahim Richard is probably a bad example because he's a bit older than him, but he didn't strike me as a player who was looking to have a swan song. He still thought he could compete at the highest level and contribute to the best teams and still win league titles, still win, you know, um, league cups, uh, domestic cups and Champions League, quite, you know, challenging and stuff. I think he still believes he can still contribute to a team on that level. And I think from what he's proved with United, scoring 18 goals in a season, despite playing for a very dysfunctional team, he's clearly proved if you just want goals and you don't care about the all, all around general playing, all that stuff, then Ronaldo is still a pretty potent figurehead to have up front and a pretty useful player to have in your squad. But unfortunately, it's Cristiano Ronaldo. Do you know what I mean? With the name that he carries and the gravitas and the kind of, you know, this sort of reputation that he has, it's very hard to have a player like Cristiano Ronaldo just be a squad player. He's, he's going he's gonna to ruffle some feathers. He's not going to be happy with being on a bench. And it just isn't the kind of influence or environment that you need in a club, especially a club like United that's really suffering from dysfunction, is really suffering from players who are already kind of entitled and have big egos anyway. There's a lot of division in the camp for lack of accountability, lack of, you know, repercussions or responsibility taken on players, blah, 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 blah. Last thing you need is a manager to have Ronaldo there. So I was surprised when there was no immediate news that came out as soon as the season finished that he was going to leave. But then when that news didn't come out and then it came out that Ten Hag sat down with Ronaldo and he had a conversation and he basically assured, you got the feeling from the quotes that we heard or from the leaks that came out that one of, that somebody on Christian Ronaldo's side basically gave Ten Hag reassurances that he could count on him. Then Ten Hag comes out and says, you know, I'm, I can count on him. I'm looking forward to having him on a tour and integrating him into the squad, blah, blah, blah. And then fast forward a couple of days later, we hear some news that um, Christian Ronaldo's wife, who has this amazing actual Netflix documentary, you should definitely check out. I didn't really think I'd like it, but it's actually a pretty good watch. So definitely go and check it out. I forgot her name. It's actually just her name. It's the title of it. But it didn't get announced that something happened with the family. No, it didn't get announced that she is not happy at, at Manchester, basically. And the narrative that's coming out from the camp of Ronaldo is that I think prior to the end of the season, Unfortunately for Ronaldo and his family, or Ronaldo and his wife, um, the they are twins, right? And one of the twins passed away prematurely. And um, supposedly, the the story coming out from Ronaldo's camp was that the Cristiano's wife is not happy with going back to Manchester because it reminds her of all those dark times, right? Which is understandable. So they went back to Portugal, where they live, etc., to kind of you know kind of unwind and detach from the life in Manchester and stuff because it brings back too many bad memories. Understandable. Then later on, we hear some stories about there's another family emergency that basically prevents Ronaldo from joining up with the guys on tour, which basically meant he missed the entire preseason tour that we did, you know, um, in Australia and whatnot. And now we're in a scenario where ever since then, there's been story after story after story about Ronaldo being linked to every single club in Europe. And every club in Europe essentially 
refusing to sign him or basically saying we can't afford to sign him or his wages are too much i even saw his name being linked with like olympic marseille and stuff like crazy shit and recently i saw his name being linked with atletico madrid and atletico madrid like supporters or maybe ultras came out and basically said we don't want him anywhere near our club of course for the damage he's inflicted on their club since when he was at real madrid and also when he was at juventus i remember that kind of iconic celebration where he kind of you know looked like he was telling them he was you know he was basically uh, performing for Lacio on Atletico Madrid's fans' faces and shit. But in general, it seems like his agent or his team has not been shy to basically float his name around with different clubs. And now we don't really know where he stands. But the thing that I like at the moment is that it feels like Ten Hag is at a point where he's not going to let any player dictate in the situation. And according to this report, courtesy of the Daily Mail, he's actually going to sit down with Cristiano and have some clear the air talks in order to kind of ascertain where he's at mentally. And since he had a title, Cristiano has travelled back to Manchester ahead of the showdown talks with Eric Ten Hag over his future set to take place today, with Man United insisting the veteran superstar won't be sold despite him wanting out of Old Trafford. Cristiano is set to try to talk with Man United, manager Ten Hag. Ronaldo was expected to be back in Manchester on Monday night and could meet Ten Hag as early as Tuesday and um, ahead of the rest of the squad return to training from the club's tour in Thailand and Australia. The 37-year-old Portugal star has missed the three weeks of pre-season after being given compassionate leave for his family issue, having told United he wants to leave United this summer. Um, Ten Hag, Ten Hag then talked. Ten Hag talked to Ronaldo when he took over at the end of the season, but it will be the first time the two have spoken since the playoffs to go. So that's the only issue I have. I don't have an issue with him deciding he wants to leave. That's okay. You can go if you want to. No problem with that whatsoever. I just have the problem with like he obviously told Ten Hag one thing at the end of the season, and then when he kind of had time to kind of maybe um, you know marinate on his decision or think about his future of his family he suddenly changed now i'm not like personally for me i think it's it's really funny with the, from the clubs from the fan base's point of view and i think it basically shows that if you don't if you don't if you're well liked basically you get away with murder because you look at the reaction that pogba got with united fans when he basically said he went to leave and you know go and try and win win things with other clubs and stuff the reaction to him was very negative compared to what Ronaldo's done. And I'm pretty sure when Ronaldo comes back and plays his first game for United, because I don't I don't see him going because, you know, un unfortunately the wages just aren't, uh, aren't basically applicable to a lot of clubs out there. You won't be surprised if you hear the whole entire Old Trafford Stadium singing Viva Ronaldo. It's definitely going to happen, which is really shameful because it shows up just how kind of small time our fans are in some respects because i guess Ronaldo represents the last sort of like hurrah of our club he represents the last time we were truly successful and truly dominant especially in the in the premier league especially in england and we were competing actually in the champions league at that point too that was the last time we would we were that kind of force so people kind of look at Ronaldo and automatically think oh if we see Ronaldo, that means good times are coming back but he's not the player he once was he's got the he's got the stats to kind of back it up but in terms of him play he's not the player that we once a Dodd, not for me anyway. The Ronaldo I, I love was the 07 08 Ronaldo. Do you know what I mean? On the wings, cutting in, just being an absolute menace. But this Ronaldo version of Ronaldo is not really the one for me up front, personally. But it'd be interesting to see what the reception will be when he does end up coming back, which I think will be, you know, rapturous applause, in my opinion. It continues here. Contact between the two camps has been maintained by United Chief Executive Richard Arnold and Ronaldo's agent, Jorge Mendes, who's been hawking his client around to Europe's top clubs. Ronaldo's return is being seen as a positive sign, although it's unclear whether he's ready to commit to United for another season or to a desire to be sold. United was still adamant on Monday night that Ronaldo is not for sale and remains part of Ten Hag's plans for a new season. The five-time Ballon d'Or winner has been keeping himself fit in Lisbon, but he may be not ready to go straight back into full training with the rest of the squad who had, who had Monday off after flying back from Perth on Sunday. I wonder if how Harry Maguire feels. Harry Maguire is probably conflicted. He probably wants him to leave because now Ronaldo is out of the, the dressing room. He can basically, basically reassert his authority as a captain because, you know, last season there was clearly a bit of a divide in the camp between the people that were with Ronaldo and with Harry Maguire. And obviously with him being under new manager now and being given a new lease of life and Eric Ten Hag basically saying he can shut up the boot boys if he just performs well, there's clearly an onus on Harry Maguire to basically use this campaign, this new season as a chance to kind of um, rewrite some wrongs of the past seasons and stuff. So he's probably thinking, I wouldn't mind you going, you know, you should probably leave. If you leave, I probably got time to do my own thing, have some space, do you know what I mean? Assert my authority and remind people like why people used to rate me back in the day. But the moment Ronaldo walks back into the change room again, it's going to be like, oh shit. It's like, it's like you thinking the bully that he's a bully every day in school, move schools, but then actually he didn't. It was just all a lie and he comes back in on Monday like, fuck. 
Um, yeah, there was the picture of his family. Obviously, you can tell he's very family orientated. So, if this story about his wife is the one who's basically pushing for the move away from Manchester because Manchester brings back too many bad memories because of the loss of their of their child, he would definitely leave. I, I think Ronaldo's that kind of player who, or oh, that kind of person anyway, who is not money motivated. I don't think, although he does get paid a crazy salary in terms of you know everyday work or whatnot. I still think he's somebody who's mostly driven by personal glory. Do you know what I mean? By winning titles, winning trophies and all that kind of stuff. I don't think he's in it only for the money at this point because he makes millions, millions just off his Instagram alone. So if his wife says, hey, I'm over Manchester, fuck that place, the weather sucks, the food's horrible, the people are dour, <laughs> and, uh, I've got bad memories from my family there, let's leave. I reckon he would definitely go, 100%. Dutch manager Eric Ten Hag has remained consistently tight-lipped when facing questions of the club's club legend's future and has suggested Ronaldo will remain a United player at least another season. The five-time Baron Dolan has 12 months remaining on his, on his deal and last season's arrival from Juventus, but there's an option for a further year. Ten Hag said, when questioned in Australia, I'm well informed he also has an option for another year. Yes, he could stay beyond this season, but to be honest, of course, I've signed here for three years, but in football, it's short-term as well. We have to win for the start, so I don't look that far ahead. I have a strategy. It's a process to take time, but in the end, we have to make sure uh, that from the outset, this is the winning team. So let's see what happens, but it's, I'm pretty sure that he's probably going to end up leaving. That's my gut feeling. And I think overall, I wouldn't be too against it, to be honest. I think the team does need a bit of a fresh start. It would be nice to kind of get that kind of old regime or that kind of old way of looking at things in terms of signing marquee players and you know, and thinking they're going to solve things and be the saviors out of our club and make it more of a collective issue. Of course, we'll be one less striker down, so put a lot of pressure on the current front three who have been playing on tour, which has been um, Martial, Rashford, and Sancho. But you know, this is what being at a big club is like. Do you know what I mean? So if that's that's a, if that happens, then I won't be too bad. I won't be too um, upset about it, to be honest. I have to be completely honest to be honest about it. But I would be. I would also like to see if Ronaldo could actually integrate himself into a Ten Hag team with the pressing and stuff, and how he'd actually work in that team. Because I think Ten Hag did seem pretty excited about getting a hold of Ronaldo as a coach. I mean, I'd imagine having the ability to coach one of the best players in the world, despite his age, and seeing if you can implement some of your strategies and your techniques and your tactics and whatnot formation and adapt him into that would probably be exciting but you know it is what it is um we move on 